Hello, Steffi here. It's time to talk real people, real lives. Today's episode is about traumatic brain injuries. 36,000 people in New Zealand suffer a traumatic brain injury every year. And only 14,000 of those people getting proper health care and they are looked after. This is also a topic what people actually don't talk much about it. So our guest today is talking about her experience with a traumatic brain injury. So please welcome Michelle. Hello Michelle. Hi Steffi. Thank you for coming today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Yes. And thank you we, for coming and opening up about your story. And I don't actually know all the details, so please tell me, or tell us what happened to you. Sure, I was um, riding, bunch cycling with a group of cyclists on a Saturday morning. It was a nice, clear day. Um, unfortunately, one of the riders in front of me, I could see her going sideways coming off her bike so I turned my front wheel to avoid the collision thinking I'm not coming off and the next thing I knew I'm on the ground when I came round I had a few moments of amnesia and my arms were out like that this is what I remember and then I put my hands behind my head complaining of a sore head and at that moment someone helped me to my feet I couldn't see and I was walking I felt like I was walking on the road and I was sat on the grass perch and that's when my vision returned, but I had no idea where I was. Everything was just like, I say in that moment, it's like my life turned upside down because I couldn't, yeah, I wasn't sure where I was. I knew there was lots of people that day. There was probably at least 30 people. I could recognize a couple of people and then yeah. I was talking, I was given a phone to talk to my sister and I thought I was okay. I thought my sister would come and get me. The ambulance came along, picked up my helmet and said it's broken so I had to go to the hospital. So you could walk normally? I walked, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm lucky. Like so many people can, there's varying degrees of a mild brain, brain injury. So many people can have other things happen to them. I was lucky. I think I had a, a big hematoma on my arm. Yeah. Um, so that was x-rayed at the hospital. But it took me, so I went home from hospital, concussion wasn't, put down then. So you were not actually overnight at the hospital? No, I went home okay, yeah. and then I was talking to mum and she just said I sounded confused, it wasn't making much sense. So I went back and I was given pain relief and that's when concussion was put down on my file. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's pretty, you know, you don't know, well for myself, I don't know a lot what you're experiencing at that time. You just feel so it's really a strange feeling, I guess. Like I think it's just the pain um, that you're in. It's just like like you just bounce your yeah, head on the ground, yeah. and it's like, okay, I will be fine. It's just uh, the first reaction when you say, oh yeah, I will be fine. It's not nothing wrong with me. Or yeah, when I'm seen on the grass, I just yeah. thought, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> I think because you're given that pain relief, so it takes that edge off. Yeah. And you think, oh, okay. <laughs> but actually, it it takes time. Like for me. I was given a week off work and then I didn't want to lose my job, I wanted to get back to work so I went back the following week and by the third day I was in so much pain, I felt so nauseous so I went home and then from there I worked part time for a few weeks. What, what job did you do at the time? Yes, yeah, so I was doing administration mm -hmm. so the concentration yes. was a real issue. Front of computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then after about four months I was signed off because it was too much so and that then again gives you more um, complications I suppose because you you then forced to stop and rest and recover but it's like you're isolated and you lose that contact with people so then it's a it's another journey that does it actually turn into anxiety it can be anxiety for sure but I became frustrated mm -hmm. because I was frustrated that I couldn't do what I could do before I'm not part of those people are not working in society and you're not out riding with all your friends so it was a real struggle for me. So you really actually wanted to get out, you wanted to do your job yep. and you didn't want to lose your job, no, definitely I, not, no. but it, it, it just didn't work, it, it didn't there work. was something not working properly. Yeah. So what was the next step, so what do you thought, oh my goodness, what can I do about this? So what I do, because 
fatigue then became an issue because I started to try and exercise, but I was doing too much. So then your body becomes more fatigued. So it's like you had a low point. And when you do that, you've got to find other ways to come out. So I saw osteo because I was still getting a lot of headaches, so they help with headaches. Um, just saw a lot of help. I had homeopathy to help with you know, managing your pain, but also, yeah, the anxieties and the frustrations because when you become isolated, and this is what happened with COVID for some people, you know, like you're working from home and then you've got to get back used to being around people, the noise, the lights, and all of that takes time. So, yeah. So how did you how did you reach out? Did you actually ask for help? Um, I was put on through a program, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there is there is something available. There was. There. Yeah. 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 Did um, you have to ask for it, or was it offered to you? I think because of my clinical, because you, you know you go through the concussion clinic and things, so they all help you. And I was recommended, I think, to get some help. Yeah. Yeah. So there so, is something out there. Yeah, there was. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Because I didn't want to take the pain relief. I didn't like what the medication, how it made me feel. So I found other methods, but it made me open up so you can really face with what's going on to really get the results and, and heal. Yeah. So you were actually reaching out really whatever you could do on a natural way mm. to help you to yep. get back to normal. Absolutely. So and how long have you been at home before you decided you want to go back into the workforce? Yeah, and then getting back into the workforce, you've got to find the right thing as well. Because I was offered a, a role in, in hospitality, so I did that, but I was terrible <laughs> because <laughs> it was too much too soon. And so yeah. I became like, I was doing, oh, yeah. How did it, what, what, was it overwhelming suddenly with so many people with too much noise or what was it? I think it's because it's more with a brain injury, you're, it's like your brain switches off and it's got to have that time to rest and recover so you can focus again. But in that, it means that you've got to get back gradually mm -hmm. and when you go back to too much and too much on around you, you, you can't function. You actually have to accept doing baby steps yes. to actually to go where you want to go. And that's exactly it. it. It's the acceptance. Be patient, no? Yeah. It took a lot to accept where I was. I think this is the hardest bit, no? Yeah. To accept this. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So what did you do after the hospitality? So you didn't do... I got back into, because I've been trained within the natural health area, so I got a role within natural health. And to be honest, initially that was a real struggle, of bending down, cleaning shelves and talking to people. But over time, the assistance paid off and it got easier. Mm -hmm. So persistency is also be patient yeah. and persistent. Mm. So do you still now, you do now what you really wanted to do or you're still in a in the process where you say, okay, no, I'm still, I'm here, but I re wanted, wanted to be here. So you're still going through a process of healing? Um, possibly, but I feel I'm in a lot better place now. Yeah, I think um, sometimes we can push ourselves too much too soon. But it's yeah, having that patience and then working with what you want and working out what's important to you. Because mm -hmm. when you know what's important to you, it's a lot easier to have that direction, I suppose, and where to go. Yeah. And so, what 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 kind of natural remedies are you using now? Because you know from your own mm. experience and you're trained. So, mm. what do you think helped you finally to go through? Yeah, there was one supplement that was really interesting. I'd forgotten about it. <laughs> but it was one because it affects our energy levels and our cells. And I found this one, which was affecting your mitochondria and giving your cells some energy. And when I found that, I just felt amazed. I was like, what is this? You know, like, because I, some people can take three. I gave yeah. it to some sports people to try and they were taking three and they felt like they worked out really well. But I would take one and just gave me energy that I awesome. hadn't experienced for such a long time. So, yeah, no, that was, that was cool. It was yeah. cool to yeah. find that. So, so <laughs> you're still taking it or you say, oh no, it's not, I'm fine or? No, I still take it every now and again. Yeah. Because it's, when it's your energy cells and your mitochondria, that's, yeah. And, really important to look after those because yeah and I think that the next thing is like you had this accident yeah. and then people out there 
you they don't know why suddenly you know you you don't go to functions you go don't go to meetings you're mm -hmm. holding back and mm -hmm. you you just don't want to face it but they have no idea really what's going on mm -hmm. so would you say it's really important to talk to people to let them know what's going on definitely yeah i think so many times that you i don't know what it is for people i just remember what it was for myself but if you don't talk about things, it's like it just sits inside you. So sometimes by actually talking and getting the help, it opens you out and it just puts you in a better place in your mind, more calm and more, you know, just a more peaceful place. So, mm. yeah. But the right people will definitely come in your life. You can you can talk to and mm. you can open up to mm. and get it. And this is how actually, you now we, we connected straight away and mm. there was something you knew you could trust me yep. and then you open up and we talk about it. And this is healing as well, when you mm. talk to other people. That's right. This absolutely. is absolutely help, healing. Yeah. So, yeah. Michelle, what, would, what message would you like to give people they went through such a traumatic brain injury? Mm. What is your message? My message is to really get help. Like, don't just sit there and just accept. Or when you get that in frustrations or anxieties, just try and reach out and find someone that you can reach to that you can trust and talk to. Because talking, as you say, is the best method to really help to heal and to move forward. Yeah, so not bottle it and it really has to, has to come out. It does need Otherwise to come out. you can't heal. You can't. Awesome, mate. What an amazing story. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> for sharing. And like you say, you know, you you don't know what's going on inside other people. You don't. And this is we we underestimate. Say, hey, why is she not coming? Mm. Coming along, and you you make your own assumption assumptions, mm. and then there is actually something deeper going on. Mm. That's right. it not? We That's really right. really have to be careful actually what we think and say to people before mm. we even don't know the entire story. Mm. That's right. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best on thank your you. way for recovery. And you know you always can talk to me. <laughs> Whenever you need me, you can text me, message me at any time. Hey, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thanks, Debbie. Wow. Another, another amazing touchy story. Lots of people experienced a traumatic brain injury. But as Michelle said, go and ask for help, talk to people. Don't be isolated at home. And this actually goes later on in the depression, anxiety, and you feel even more lost. Go outside, there is a life. There is life out for everyone, for you. You deserve to live the life, even if you suffered a traumatic brain injury. And it can happen to anything at any time. Don't underestimate us. Remember, we are on this journey together. Let's start the conversation. Post your thoughts and subscribe to our channel. Enjoy life, live in the moment and be unstoppable. You are worth it. That's all what matters. It's time to talk. Bye for now. See you soon.